Hello and welcome, you're tuned into the Vision Hub with Jazzy Chain. I'm here with another video, I'm trying to be consistent as I can, and today we'll be continuing to look at methods and linking it to exam practice as well for AQA, Sociology, AS and A2. Last video we looked at observations, the different types, participant, ob covert and overt. Before we continue on paper flashcards, quickly jot down what you remember from our last video. You will only know this if you've revised, rested, tested and repeated yourself. We will be looking at documents and various other methods today, so keep focused. So documents, so documents, the problem with that it can be forged, so then again there will be a lack of validity then. But although there might be again a high validity because in diaries it's quite personal and you can really see attitudes, behavior, reasoning why there may be a lot of empathy as well, which helps you to relate more and you can provide a good judgment. But then again, there can be a sense of bias. Then, an example of a document that was produced which was highly valid could be Anne Frank's diary. So, it's good to note this, these are some things which you might have learned within history, GCSE, key stage three. So, it's good to just pop Anne Frank in because you can show that you know what her diary was really good, it was a part of a document and it has a high validity. Anonymity can be and confidentiality and consent. Sorry for that. It's meant to be reading confidentiality as opposed to that word there. And obviously, you need a lot of consent before you actually produce a document. Otherwise, it'll be unethical. Finding bodies will not be able to give you funding. Again, documents are very good because they are free of cost. But however, there's a 30 year rule which applies. And this 30 year rule is that documents are destroyed after 30 years. So if you want to look at something that's 200 years ago, then this will be very, very difficult for you to actually even retrieve that document back. Some diaries are published and then again to cover up issues. For example, Hitler published a diary if you guys remember studying nazi germany in gcse times that hitler produced a nazi germany diary where he was very empathetic he wrote an empathetic response and it would seem more of a cover-up you should try reading that diary it's a really really good diary just for more cultural capital Scott Scott looked at authenticity and credibility and if it is really believable or not so use Scott within your research too so documents if we look in our school environment let me write that down so that you can have something relating to school okay oops oops technical errors here okay so let's go so when we are looking at school school the documents that we can have will be teachers diaries so we can within those diaries we can have seating plans wait seating plans we can have grading let me make this a bit bigger so that you can see okay so you can so it's teacher diary again is a good document to have um, there's another document attendance and it's part of the law to actually have some sort of attendance document within schools so you can use that you can use lead tables or Ofsted reports so these are a few things that one could use when you are in a school environment you can use probably other documents like reports by teachers but then again there is a high risk of things not being confidential and after two years i think it's part of the law that the school disposes a student's information so we both we've together actually looked at the school and how we can apply documents and all this research within this and when we're talking about that we need to also think about authenticity and reliability and credibility are a few things that you need to embed within school when you're looking at paper one official statistics ons and bsa collect them every single year it lacks validity you can't tell attitudes behavior reasoning why as interpreters argue but then again there seems to have a high reliability because you can form correlations trends and patterns which positive sociologists really like school groups sorry social groups cage class 
age, gender, ethnicity are some things which you cannot see within official statistics. For example, if you want to find official statistics of the number of poor people that died in 1992, for example, then that's going to be very difficult because official statistics do not cover age, class, gender or ethnicity. Gender, I think they do in some respects. Ethnicity, I think they do within education, but I'm not sure about class and age, but age definitely not, like especially if you're looking at death rate of the middle class versus the working class. Official statistics are not calculated by class, for example. People may be deprived and lie. For example, some students may be on free school meals, but they may lie that, oh, we're not on free school meals, making the research, again, lack validity, as mentioned over here. Again, official statistics are free. ONS and BSA collect them. Go on the websites, you'll be able to see a vast amount of data that they have. Dark Time studied Protestants versus Catholics and found out that Protestants who were unmarried and were rich more likely to commit suicide as opposed to Catholics who were married and they were poor. This is because of wait, Martin and Hobwatch. So Hobwatch and Martin similarly both argue that the cause of disease at that period of time was unknown and raw urban areas were not taken in account either. And Protestants versus Catholics, how reliable can that data be? How valid can that data be? Are a few questions that should be asked too. And you're not again at that time period, so can the data be actually valid? The view of ideological state apparatus really links to social groups and cage. So ideologies Ideological state apparatus is simply the ideologies which we get from places like the media and stuff, and these things can actually determine official statistics as a whole. Content analysis is when, let me just some content analysis. For example, if a person was looking at gaming and how that affects the human brain, for example, and they did several different video games and videoed those people and then they constantly went back to the videos and ticked that oh this person was stressed this person was happy and that's how content analysis was done i'll go through this more in detail as a high reliability because you can do correlations trends and patterns because you have that quantitative data trends again patterns correlations validity is not there because attitudes behavior reasoning why cannot be seen unless you video it but most of the time so sure I just not video the people but rather they use things such as mac robbie did with magazines as forms it's very low cost so it's really really cheap can get lost vast amount of data. Ross Gill and Norbin looked at how women were presented within the media and they went to various different media products and they said that okay, well, women are presented X, were presented Y, and they did like a tally and then they correlated the tally to find out the correlations and trends. So, Shosh. Sue Sharp again. So Sharpie again, we looked in education. He interviews were done and interviews were done again. Content analysis was done there as well. Mac Robbie again used magazines to look at how girls' attitudes have changed, linked to Sue Sharp's research. Ethnography is when Lisa goes, research goes and is part of the setting. Hard to actually quantify because the data is really huge. Again, you can use social just like QM. High cost, high time because it feeds a lot of time. High validity can see attitudes, behavior, reasoning. Why? Because you're actually in the setting with them. Almost like participant observations. Physical, psychological harm, them and you. There might be this difference. You may feel very alienated. Even the people who were part of the group, for example, if you're studying like a tribe and you went within the tribe and that tribe person has to stick with you because you are new, then that means that that person is not going to work as a result, not getting money, as a result, not getting food on the table. As a result of all of these things happening, you may feel physically, you may cause physical, psychological harm to others around you. You need good social skills because you need to communicate, make sure you not feel alienated, make sure you're actually being part of this rather than you actually faking that, oh, I'm a researcher coming in because then there'll be lack of validity. Again, alienation. Densley, NHS and Lensley. Densley and Lensley, um, the different sociologists, one looked at race culture and the other looked at gang culture and they used ethnography within their research. NHS uses ethnography lots and lots of times, especially when they're doing trials for particular things. You can go on Google and Google some NHS ethnographies that they've done. It's really, really interesting. You can use some examples within your methods of research exam paper.
So what we've learned, we've looked at a lot of different topics. So please go back. Next video, I'll be looking at experiments. Till then, please revise, rest, test and repeat yourself. The content in this video and all other videos that I have made. And do not forget to love Canva, like, subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Comment if you're confused on anything. I'll be willing to even look at some questions if you've answered them. Please press the bell icon to never miss my video. And don't forget to subscribe and follow more like Revision Hub underscore Jazzy J. You can quickly scan the name tag there, making it easier for you. And then if I've got enough people, I can do live sessions, question and answer sessions. And please, 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 key here is to not forget to subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe and thank you so much for your time. Stay tuned with Revision Hub with Jazzy J.